take two. はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。I would like to speak to you about what I find to be the very core of the Easter message, especially now that the Easter season would soon conclude with Pentecost Sunday on June 5. That will be a few days from now, next month. So here's my take of the Easter message, which I place in the Imago Dei, or the image of God. My title of this discourse thus is the Imago Dei of Easter. You see, Christians seriously searching for the Easter message must get to the theology of the Imago Dei, or the image of God. Strikingly providential indeed is how the sacred scripture has been arranged. The book of Genesis begins it by unfolding salvation history with the Imago Dei by which God breathes forth his breath of life upon Adam. And lo and behold, the human race begins to exist amid a fine tuned universe. But God is love with which and for which God creates man. This theology is the jigsaw puzzle mystery. That paradoxically hinders man from discovering who and what he truly is. Consequently, wickedness and evil pervade man in all spans of history. Why is that? The Imago Dei is the key that unlocks this mystery. To be a creature of love in the Imago Dei is to choose love and to become love itself. Who is the Imago Dei? In a word, The Imago Dei in man is not like it were an automatic thing. Love is a function of freedom and choice. The high risk of being in the Imago Dei is always the vulnerability to reject the Imago Dei. The ontology of love in human freedom and choice is always set right before the very option of sin and evil. Original sin showcases that risk. Adam and Eve were driven out of paradise for disobeying God. Their disobedience of God's divine law is rooted in their ignorance. Their disobedience of God's divine law is rooted in their ignorance of why God has laid out his command. Was it for the heck of obedience to the divine authority? The price of ignorance is paid by pride, and the price of pride is paid by the trails that sets off to all the problems of society until now. But God has never given up, and He will never give up on the ignorant and proud mankind. Our confidence on this is coming from a two pronged biblical reference Man is the Imago Dei, that's coming from the book of Genesis. Chapter 1, verse 27, and Christ had risen from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 25 to 26, among other books in the New Testament. The Easter message persists to tell mankind that human sufferings are not what God intends for man. The default of creation is love, where man has to learn how to be like God. Learning to be like God is what human life is all about. Man has not existed out of the blue as atheism would propound. Human life is also not anyone's call as though success and happiness are just for the lucky ones. The Easter thesis is that life comes from the love of God and that life is called to be in the Imago Dei. The whole point of this thesis is that Love is ontologically relational, that is, could only be found and be alive in a relationship. Salvation history thus is found in God's created time and space where life begins in a primordial marriage and walks through in the dynamic processes of family life and of social order, justice, and peace. All this could not possibly take place apart from being in the Imago Dei, the image and likeness of God. It is not surprising thus 
that divine revelation has divulged the one God in a Trinitarian mystery. Our critical discernment of the dynamics of life points to the truth that the Godhead lives in a perfect and flawless relational communion of three divine persons. God the Father loves God the Son flawlessly fully, engendering God the Holy Spirit, whose divine love has set out in all of God's creation. The climax of the Imago Dei, needless to say, is Jesus Christ risen from the death of ignorance, pride, wickedness, and evil. St. Paul affirms this in his letter to the Romans where he said, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. In his letter to the Corinthian community, St. Paul proclaims, For since death came through a man, that is, Adam, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man, Jesus Christ, the new Adam. On top of the aforesaid divine revelations, St. Peter, the head of Christ's flock, the church, in his first letter, had all praises for the risen Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Finally, the Easter message rooted in the Imago Dei is found right at the heart of the letter to the Hebrews, I quote, Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through jesus christ to whom be glory for ever and ever amen i quote all glory praise and honor be to christ jesus in whose imago dei all mankind are called to be transformed amen Thank you for finding time with me. God bless and keep you all.